All right, well, it's 5.30, so I'm going to call the public meeting to order. Um, we're here tonight to discuss the um, application for demolition of the old police station and sundry adjunct buildings located at 247-249 Russell's Mills Road in Dartmouth. Um, we voted at our last meeting to um, declare the building historically significant and to allow public input as to the future direction uh, of this building. Um, there had been no plans that were formally um, stated as far as what was going to be put in place once the building was demolished and therefore our bylaw states that we can't approve the demolition with no plan for what's going to replace it. Um, I know there's been a long history with this building and there have been some, um, some ideas in the past for how it could be repurposed and reused, um, some of which were reported in Dartmouth Weekly. Um, and then most recently it was reported that the demolition was slated to begin. So with that as background information, uh, I'd like to open it up to public comment and questions. And um, we'd also like to see, is there anybody here who would be willing to take minutes for this meeting? Yes? I'll, I'll or should we do, we can do it from the public, um, the, the, recording. the recording as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can and then okay. I, if I have to go back, I'll go back. Okay, that sounds good. Um, so if you would like to speak, we could recognize you. Please state your name and speak at the podium. Yes. Good evening. Good to see you all again. Uh, Chris Vitale, Assistant Town Administrator for the Town of Dartmouth. Um, I know I was here before the committee last time, and just uh, prior to this meeting, I uh, want to review the application material that was submitted by our town administrator for the demolition permit uh, and get a little bit more um, information from our council. So uh, unfortunately, we did get a memo very late in the day today um, from our council regarding the demolition permit and really where it stands in the permitting process. Uh, I did send it to the DHC email, but I do also have the printed copy so I can just Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Uh, so I know that this application was put in um, in the middle of April. Um, after our council's review, uh, it's his opinion that is past the time uh, for commenting on the application from the historical commission. Um, which I believe was 15 business days um, from when it was originally put in. So that is really the advice of our council. Um, but certainly any comments that are said here today, um, I can bring back to our town administration and our council for their uh, reply and feedback. But Okay. Well, as I mentioned, um, the email correspondence between then Chair Judy Lund and Mr. McGinnis uh, on April 26th, um, so that was within the 15 days, apparently um, Sean had asked for a postponement because he could not attend the meeting that it was to be reviewed at. And um, I had asked uh, the Chair Lund whether she could put it on the agenda. And she said uh, that she could, would consider it. Um, she, then later she said, on this, this is again on the 26th, I did put it back on. Sean says he can't come and suggested we put it off a month. So um, I because I didn't receive the notice from um, council until 
an hour before this meeting, I wasn't able to spend a lot of time talking to um, Mrs. Lund, but she did remember the conversation and she said she could look back in her records and see if there was anything else that she had for that conversation between the two um, because of the postponement issue. But I know that the select board does meet on the same night that we do, and so it's not uncommon for us to have a conflict in, on that day. Anybody else have something that they'd like to say to Chris? Or any questions? I thought the paper trail showed that we were within the, uh, within the time frame. That it was did, based on our June meeting. Mm -hmm. So June meeting looking forward to July, but we were all unaware of this other conversation that went on between Judy and Sean saying that he was going to, they, he had the conflict and he was wanted us to postpone till the next month. So here we are. And getting this notice, um, and this is not directed at Chris, but getting a notice about this in, at the last hour, that's... Yeah. Yeah, that's I, I, reasonable. You know, sometimes in classical discussions, they talk about the spirit of the law and the letter of the law. And this looks like the letter of the law is being pulled as a fast one, in all honesty, to de derail this decision-making process, which is a re respect respectable process to try to do what's right for this town. <coughs> I've got three points I would like to make about this particular project. Um, I took the tour today at 12 o'clock, part of it. I can't climb stairs very well, so I didn't go upstairs. But I couldn't, ref I can't refrain from saying that what I witnessed in that building, which served the town for many, many years, is a classic example of demolition by neglect. And unfortunately, the town is the owner of the building. And just because it has got some problems, it's an asset of this town. And any manager is usually judged, among other measurements, by how they manage their assets. And this is a major asset of this town. It's a real estate property worth lots of money. And it's been neglected totally neglected. And if you don't believe it, take a walk through it like I did today. The second point I would like to make is that uh, unfortunately I've had the experience in another life, in another town, of purchasing and renovating and conserving an 1806 mill property and re repurposing it. And it's now the home of a lot of people living in pretty fancy apartments and has been repurposed in Slatersville, Rhode Island, in the town of North Smithfield. And that project received lots of federal money and other grants because it was historically significant as this building in, in a different era of history is significant to us. We declared it historically significant in our meeting. And to tell me that, that this building should be demolished, this asset of the town of Dartmouth should be demolished is sacrilege. As, a, as, a, you know, as another hat, I'm a taxpayer in this town and lots of these people are taxpayers. To take a, a property of that value and knock it down is totally irresponsible use of the town's assets and the taxpayer's money. So I, I would say that in terms of fiscal responsibility, this is a black mark on the management of this town. And they should be ashamed of the way they're managing our assets. And I know that um, it's, it's important for us to deal in a, in a humane and, and courteous way, and I'm willing to do that, I, I can tell you that there are lots of possibilities for that building, and anybody with, a, with a, a, any 
any intention of being positive can see that. And I think we should spend some time trying to figure out what to do rather than knock it down. That's, that's my three cents worth. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Don't be sorry. No. Mm -hmm. Can we yes. just clarify what's going on here? Yes. Uh, this public meeting mm -hmm. is now outside of the time limit. So that is the opinion of town outside. council as he read the law and was aware of some of the communications. There is another piece of that which I was not able to fully uncover <coughs> in time for this meeting because of the late hour of the council's review. Um, it was our understanding that the um, Mr. McGinnis had asked for a delay because he could not be here to speak to the project and he was the manager, he was the applicant for this project. He said, I can't make it to the meeting, and as we often do, if an applicant can't meet on a particular day, we say, fine, how about next month? We'll move it along to then as a courtesy. And so it, I, have, I have uncovered some of what I understood of that process to have occurred. I'll take him over time. Okay, thank you. Please. <laughs> So I'm actually here for a separate matter, but I was glad that I saw this on the agenda. Um, as I'm, I'm a designer, I'm a developer, I'm a builder, so I understand the importance of timelines, but in my opinion of this, what you read, it's clear that the applicant seems to have paused the application. So it seems like it's the applicant's fault that a timeline was missed, and in my opinion, a timeline wasn't missed if it was paused. Now, the reason you guys are all here is to review this historic building. You're not here to review the use of tax funds, this, that, or the other, but it's important to think about that as well. And yeah, in my opinion, as a developer, as a designer, it's a horrible use of tax funds to tear that building down hundreds of thousands of dollars. I think the budget was close to $400,000 to tear that building down. Five. And as a builder, the shell of that building alone is worth probably over a million dollars alone. So not only are they spending $500,000 to tear down a historic building, they're losing a million dollars worth of worth from a piece of property that's owned by this town. That building can be turned into housing, much needed housing for this town, or at the minimum hold it until there's a better, more solid plan for that building in the future. But to just tear it down as a knee-jerk reaction because they relocated the police station is just a very, very poor decision. And so hopefully, the historical committee, all of you can really think about the historical worth of that building and push your foot down when it comes to someone who seems like maybe they were playing games with the timeline and purposely delaying their attendance for a meeting to then blame it on you for missing a timeline. Because in my opinion, it doesn't seem like a timeline was missed. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, can you just say your name for the record? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm Christian Gavosh Silvera, 34 Slocum Farm Drive. I'm also from South Coast and Associates. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody like to be recognized, please? My name is Harry Booth. I live in uh, near Russell Mills Village. Uh, and uh, to the mic. Yeah. Okay. My name is Harry Booth. I live uh, near Russell Smith's village. I totally agree with this gentleman's comments. And uh, I, I've got a little statement. Maybe it's a little too long, but uh, I'm sure that, uh, anyway. Many years ago when my children were young, we made more than one trip to the Higgins Armory in Worcester, Massachusetts. The armory consisted of a collection of middle age armor and weapons from different but mostly European countries. It consisted of three floors. Two full-size mounted knights jousting on horseback was perhaps the most eye-catching exhibit. But there was so much more. 
They were exhibits of combat from the age of chivalry all the way back to ancient Egypt. The armory also had a lending library. Historians could delve deeper into all aspects of the Middle Ages. It was a treasure. I say was because it no longer exists. The armor collection had been distributed to other institutions. I'm sure the book collection also. It was indeed a treasure. The town of Dartmouth is also gifted with a treasure, namely its history. What better use could be put to the old police station? And what a better way to honor Dartmouth's forebears than to create our own Higgins-like armory, not with armor and broadswords, but with exhibits and historical descriptions of things that transpired before our time. For example, has everyone, I'm sure, I'm, I'm talking to people I'm sure that know about this, but has, uh, for example, has everyone, has anyone ever heard of the whale ship, the Anne Alexander? Believe it or not, it was built at the town landing in Russell's Mills Village and launched on the Slocum River in 1805. It went on a distant whale boat hunt, was captured by pirates, was freed. It took to whaling off the coast of Peru. An enraged sperm whale chomped two of its whale boats in half, then proceeded to ram the Ann Alexander until the 86 foot, uh, till all of 86 foot of her keel keeled over and eventually sank. The 22 member crew took to the remaining whale boats and were rescued by the whale ship Nantucket, whaling in the same area. The fact is that the police station in South Dartmouth was out of the way for efficient town-wide law enforcement. The Legionnaire's infection in its water system may have provided a pretext to find a new location, but it was a needed action. That being said, it does not mean that nothing can be done to clean things up. We hear of Legionnaires' infections aboard cruise liners. Those ships have their water systems disinfected. We don't hear of them being sent to scrap yachts. Picture the old police station reborn as the, the Dartmouth Historical Archival Center. It could certainly exhibit, it, it could contain exhibits of a historical nature gathered under one roof. I found the information about the whale ship Ann Alexander posted on a signboard off of Rockadundi Road near the waterfalls. That sign was an excellent idea, but wouldn't it be more convenient to have historical information like that also available in one place? The center could hold lectures of early Dartmouth history. Who were the early settlers? Where did they come from? How did they interact with the Native Americans? There could be exhibits and historical presentations about the Native American population in the Dartmouth area. Where did they come from? What were their lives like? What kind of structures did they live in? How did they survive the harsh winter weather? Perhaps a link could be made with UMass Dartmouth for credit courses tied in with Dartmouth history. The possibilities are inspiring we have a ledger. On one side, we have a solid building in need of a new water system. Are there any grants a historical center could acquire to help with this? We have an impressive history to explore and a story that needs telling. On the other side, we have a proposal to demolish this historical building at taxpayers' expense with no future site uses given. I say give history a chance. Thank you.
Please. Yes. Good evening. Enid Silva. I'm president of the Dartmouth High School Alumni Association, a member of the Dartmouth Historic Society, a member of the Dartmouth Cultural Center, and perhaps a few more that I haven't thought of tonight. Born in New Bedford and nurtured in Dartmouth, I have loved this town for 82 years. This building had an issue. This building had an issue. And like the police station, it was allowed to just fester. By the time they decided in the town what to do with the building, it was at the point that it was almost ready to throw away, never mind deconstruct. It was deconstructing on its own. The ceiling was leaking, the floors were all warped and ruined, and the, the uh, walls were just as bad, and the windows leaked. And suddenly it became a building we needed to move into because the town hall on Russell's Mills Road was too tiny for all of the offices we needed to run our government. Of course, that was before computers were around. We had lots of file cabinets and lots of employees typing. But there were people all over this building looking to see how they could reconstruct it into the town hall. And lo and behold, it became the town hall. There was a problem down at the town hall on Russell's Mills Road. They closed that building up so quickly, it almost snapped your neck. I still don't know who got sick. Maybe you do. But the building was sick, and they did not try to we make it a, a uh, positive thing and go in and find out how they could fix it. They just closed the doors. My dad worked for the water department for Dartmouth for 60 some years. If he had been around at that point in time, I'm sure the water department would have gone in there, flushed those ridiculous pipes, cleaned everything up, got the mold out or whatever was there, and there would be office hours on the following Monday. But we couldn't do that. We had to close it up and get out of there because it was bad news. So now we have a building that is going through the same process that this building went through. And the solution to that problem is to tear it down. If we tear down all the old buildings in Dartmouth, or we sell them, because that's the other thing that's very important, because you can look really good if you sell a real estate in Dartmouth and make some money. Of course, we can't afford to buy real estate in Dartmouth as a town, but that's okay. Suddenly, this building on Russell's Mills Road has come to someone's attention. I was so excited to hear that it was going to be discussed at the Historic Commission. I didn't realize it was going to be bombed at the Historic Commission. And I'm sorry I came a few minutes late because I didn't hear the young man's uh, statement that he made. So I'm kind of foggy about that. But I think it goes along the lines of, too late. We can't do this now. We've got to think about this because we haven't thought about it before enough. And so we'll postpone this meeting another month, and there'll still be some other problem come up that we can't get to it. And so goes the cycle. I have never met Mr. Booth before, but I'm so glad you're here tonight. I think your idea is excellent. Passive recreation is what DNIT is all about. And we could do that right in that old building. There is so much history that we don't know where to start. But if we took all of our historical books that we have and we put it together, we could fill that building with memories. There is no reason it has to be unplugged from ownership of the town and plugged into some real estate gold mine. We need to do something with it. We do need low-income housing. I don't say that that's not something that we should look at, but I think we should look at all of the facets that could happen in that building, including a museum of our history. Dartmouth is a frontier town. Frontier because they were one of the first towns developed in the new world. And if we don't take that and, and show that to our children and our grandchildren, Who's going to do it? Newcomers? 
that come to this country now are being frowned at because, you know, they're immigrants. <laughs> Everybody here is an immigrant, unless you're a pure Native American. Don't think that's a possible thing anymore after looking at uh, family search. I think that this committee has a job ahead of it to keep this afloat. And I thank you very much for your kind attention. And I don't know what happened to put it down the, the tubes tonight, but I think that it needs to be resur resurrected. There is such a thing as rescheduling a meeting less than a month away so that we could get to it sooner than later. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Yes. Uh, good evening. My name is Diane Gilbert. I live at 127 Rockland Street in Dartmouth. Uh, I've been following this situation closely uh, for quite a while because uh, it can go way back to when it was the town hall. I would just add to Enid's point, where DCTV is now, that's a, that was your town hall, but it has been repurposed as a studio, a media center. I mean, you know, people should have vision in this town, and my heart is warmed by what has been said so far tonight. Uh, I really feel good about that because we're all kindred spirits here uh, because we recognize something important when we see it. And the process was a little bit disingenuous, I have to say, I say that because there was a committee that was formed in maybe 2019 to figure out a new purpose for this building and then COVID came along so I learned tonight from a gentleman in this room uh, that it was disbanded with a plan and this is hearsay uh, but sometimes that's all you get <laughs> around here uh, is that they were going to reconstitute it in the fall. Meanwhile, in the beginning of this year, and it was reported in the news in May, that a decision had been made by the select board without a report from this committee, I, I might add, to unilaterally make a decision to demolish this building. The rationale, at least as I understand it, at least partly the rationale, is that they want to make, uh, they want to connect recreational parcels with the plan that behind this building they would extend recreation for the town. The town has spoken during uh, various, you know, the master plan and the open space and recreation uh, review that people want more recreation. No, nobody denies that. However, I don't see why we cannot have that building <clears throat> and spend six months studying this uh, to determine what the adaptive reuse could be for this town and still use the land behind it, I don't know how far it goes, uh, for recreation. And the gentleman who talked about, you know, a museum and a place to sort of store archives, uh, one of the ideas that could be considered during the six-month period while people scramble to try to get grants and try to find the funding for this, uh, the town can find the funding for half a million dollars to demolish it, but there's no funding <laughs> to basically rehab this building. <laughs> but it could be, you know, housing 
with a library, you know, a library. I don't want to take away from our library, but a place where people can look at the archives that we have. We can put pictures up about the town history. We could have a meeting place because we never seem to have enough space for meetings. So I think, you know, I'm grateful for the Historical Commission to have taken this stand. And I'm grateful for all of you to be here to express your views about the importance of, of this building. And I will just say one more thing. My late father-in-law, John Marland, <laughs> whose picture is, continues to uh, uh, be hung in the select board room as he observes what goes on in this town. <laughs> and uh, that's where he worked, you know, in that building. So there is a lot of history, even though it has changed. So we have an opportunity here to do something right in this town. So thank you so much. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak? Can we hear it? Yes. <clears throat> My name is Linda DeRoche. At one point, I was the chairperson of this commission. In another life, I reviewed hundreds of buildings in Plymouth County, in Bristol County. I've looked at a million buildings. We looked at this building today. It may have plumbing issues, it doesn't have structural issues. It could go on to be something else. Um, it's unfortunate that this particular situation has presented itself in a timeline that it is today, but I would recommend that this commission continue with its process because if it does come to pass that this commission has to go to legal remedies it should continue to do this meeting, to vote for whatever you feel you should vote for, and then continue with the legal process if that's necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to be heard? So I'll just add a couple of comments. Um, as far as Legionnaire's disease is concerned, there is now a patented remediation process that can be done that can eradicate the disease from the building or the, 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 pipe, the plumbing or whatever is involved with the, the water and the circulation of the building. Um, a lot, a lot has advanced in terms of technology along those lines, which wasn't available when they first, when this problem first came to be. So now we have this new process that could take place if we so choose. Secondly, there has been recent, I know that Dartmouth is in need of additional affordable housing there has been a lot of movement across the country and discussion and study in terms of intergenerational housing. So by that, I mean affordable housing for elderly combined with housing for young families. And maybe this would be just one of the things that we may want to consider in terms of adapting uh, and reusing this building. That's it. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Chris, I, I, I to uh, Sue's point, uh, uh, Sugaduchi, I, I think um, that property has the potential to be uh, a campus for something like senior housing. It's a huge piece of property. It goes back quite a ways. It, it could be like an endpoint for the village of Paden Aram. It could tie in, you know, geographically with something like, like that. Instead of being an eyesore, it could be a place where people could live, and you know, elderly people could continue to live in, in Dartmouth. Uh, and that building rehabbed 
could be a wonderful anchor for a campus like that, uh, where you know people could live. Um, and I think that's there will probably be there are probably a lot of ideas that will come come forward, but uh, but we need to think po about a positive use for the building, and um, and um, and this idea of coming to us at the last minute and saying that we can't legally go forward is is heinous. Um, and I think if we need to Linda's point, find a legal legal recourse to uh, to going forward with the legal uh, uh, with demolition delay, then we should do that. Thank you. Yes. One of the points, we have some developers here. Um, from the experience that I've had in another place, it may or may not apply here. I don't want to assert that it does, but it might. And it has to do with financing a project. And if the project qualifies, not only does it qualify for grants, outright financial grants from various places, but something called tax credits for historical tax credits can significantly reduce the cost for the investor in rehabilitating the building because the, the tax credits are like income. It's right off the bottom line. And uh, those are available under some circumstances for historical properties. Some of them are state grants and some of them are federal grants. Mm -hmm. And that should be explored uh, along with some potential investor who might be interested in the, the property for rehabilitation and, and adaptive reuse, so-called. Thank you. All right. Well, if there are no further comments, oh, yes, please. I just want to say one quick. Is, aside from the seems like mishandling of the meeting rescheduled from last month, the town solicited bids for the, for the teardown of this building. Not only did the system with you seem crooked, we as a company also attempted to put in a bid for demolition if that's what the town wanted to do. We probably paced three phone calls over to the select board, not a single call back. So in my opinion, it also almost seems like they already had someone picked out before they even posted it in the newspaper to have bids solicited for this. So it could have been done even cheaper than what the town is saying it's gonna cost. So it's just something else to think about. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry. Oh. No, go ahead. No, please. <laughs> So, I know, uh, David Silvera, South Coast and Associates, 34 Slocum Farm Drive. I just, you know, this is a historic commission, right? That's this board here tonight, but this is more from a con common sense approach, whereas, you know, that building's an asset. So from a business approach, it's, if I own that property, I'm looking at that building, it's in great shape. Yes, there's some problems, you could gut it, you could do something with it, even just to sell it, to make some money for the town, instead of incurring more costs. You know, a lot of these towns and municipalities are run like a, like a bad business. It's just tax more people, get more money, and spend it foolishly. And even if the town or the, the housing authority doesn't want to take it on and, and create you know, low-income housing, that's fine. Maybe you can do like a land lease. You can lease it to a, a developer that will pay, the, will pay rent to the town then you have tenants in there creating tax money. You, you create an opportunity, but just to knock down a building that's in great shape, it's just, it just, it, it's just doesn't make any sense to me. And as far as, you know, you know um, creating like a library or historic aspect, and m maybe people in this room wouldn't want to hear that, but maybe that's another expense to the town essentially to create something that's enriching, but at the bottom line, we have to run these towns and these cities like, like a business. We have to, the tax is our income, and the expenses we have are our expenses. And it's, it just seems like it's always lopsided, and, and literally it's metaphorically looking at that building in great shape, which and this gentleman here said it's, it, it could be an eyesore. I don't think you meant it like that, but it's not even an eyesore. It's in great shape. You drive by, it's like, why are you even knocking this thing down? So. It seems like we're kind of late to the party here because of the maneuver maybe the select board you know imposed here but 
Hopefully there's some recourse to kind of catch this before it goes anywhere. And if you have to use the historic angle to capture that, great, fine. But just from a common sense level to bring it to the rest of the town, if there's another opportunity to, to vote on this or whatever, let's, let's do it. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll um, I, just... I believe, I think Sue is oh, next. Go ahead, one sec. No, do you want to make the motion? No, I don't want oh. to make a motion. Oh, I, would, I was going to make a motion. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to quickly say, when, when I said eyesore, I meant the, the building sitting there empty and derelict is... is it's just I knew it was not bad about it. <laughs> What's the motion? I, Chris, I have one more, yes, one more point before the motion. Um, I think the challenge now uh, is for us to respectfully deal in a, some kind of a situation with the, the management of the town wants to do one thing. The public and the commission really would like them to think again and we need to find a way to work together respectfully to look at alternatives that have business sense and have sense for the town and for the taxpayers and for the historians and, and for, 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 the, for the whole. And let, let's do it in good faith. I mean, let's not play, play a game with the timing or technicality. Let's do it faithfully for the for the benefit of the citizens of Dartmouth, that's that's our it's our asset, it's our responsibility, and the administration really works for us in in a certain sense, and I think we should respect them because they won the right to work for us, and they should respect us because we're representing the people who live and pay taxes in this town. I want to make a motion here? There's no motion there. Motion. The motion's well, coming up. Wait a minute. Are we ready? I think okay. unless anybody, but if if nobody, no one else would like to speak, I'm going to make a motion based on what we've heard tonight and what's been discussed. So is everybody ready for that? <laughs> I'm going to make a motion that we declare 249 Russell's Mills Road, preferably. Preserved. preserved and extend the and pro, and give us the six months to work on this with the administration i second the motion all in favor aye aye unanimous, unanimous. excellent everybody here too. thank you for attending By the way, we're always looking for new members of the uh, commission, so yeah. if any of you are interested. I was just looking at what time it was to close the meeting. So at 6.13, we will now declare the public meeting closed, and we will be starting our regularly scheduled meeting at 6.30. Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order. The first item on our agenda is to review and approve the minutes for the meeting of July of June 3rd, 2023. To make a motion that we approve the minutes. Second a motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Approved unanimously. And we're going to move on to the demo applications. And the first one is 2326, which is 194 Richard Street, built in 18, uh, 1922. Speaking. Come on up. How about the phone? <laughs> the phone <to> <laughs> yeah, I know. You need to speak into the microphone so that they can get it on the yes. TV. Thank you. Okay. Do you, are you if going you to ask me questions? Explain, okay. Just tell us a little bit about your project, and then we'll open it up if people well, have questions. The project right now that we want to do, we want to do um, what do you call a, a sunroom mm -hmm. in 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 the the, the the porch, and so that I can enjoy my backyard a little bit more. We have a big 
I probably about a hundred feet um, backyard with all greenery, mm -hmm. and it's kind of cold in that area there, and I'd like to enjoy it because it's either too sunny, and I, I thought of buying one of those things to, you know, to enjoy it there, but I said that would be the best way, and that's the reason why I'd like to do it. Okay. Any questions? I have no have, questions. Have no. you had a chance to look at the application and look at the pictures? And and this and but this also includes doors and window replacement. Yeah, I'm going to close it in because of okay. the. It's very it's very windy. If I put any umbrella there, mm -hmm. the winds blow it up. I've ruined a few. It's just windy. Okay. So I thought it would do it securely there. Any other questions about 194 Richard Street? Anybody like to say anything else? I'd like to make a motion that we approve the, um, the renovations, uh, that the building is not historically preserved. I'll second the motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. You're approved. Se I'm sorry. Aye. Who seconded? Bob Harding. Bob Harding. Yes. Okay. Aye. We will send you the um, approval letter. I'm going to have Michelle send that to you, and it will be included in the okay. packet. Thank you, Dad. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless. Thanks. Good luck. Okay. Next is 136 Winterville Road, built 1930. Good evening. My name is William. This is Julie. Hello. 136 Winterville is the house that she grew up in. And first of all, I just want to say thank you for you guys to have the chance to hear us out tonight. It's, it's a very important project for us because what's most important to this family is that the land and, the, and stays in the family. And Julie was raised in the house with two siblings and a single mother. Through the years, various patchwork and various renovations were needed throughout the years. So um, I actually have pictures of the things that were done to the house and essentially, um, it's, a, it's a laundry list. There was a new roof, new siding, new basements, new windows, new doors, um, over the course of Julie's life. And since then, her sister has had a newborn baby. And we are on the verge of getting married and trying to start our own family. So now with seven people in the house and the renovations, <laughs> it is no longer suitable for a growing family. So we were hoping to um, build something that will sustain the family well into the future as well, rather than have to try to do something else and move the family and uproot something that's been there in her, you know, her whole life. Thank you. Do you want to pass those pictures around? I'd love to. Sorry, do you pass them down or something? I actually, I saw them oh, online. I did see them online set, too. Thank you. All right, thanks. Bob, um, have you seen this? I haven't seen them. I know where Winterville Road is. Yep. And just so you know what you're looking at, some of those pictures are showing the renovations that have occurred to the house, taking away really any historical resemblance that it maybe once had. And some of the pictures are showing actual problems, major problems that the house had that would have to be addressed if it were to be rehabbed. Are there any new pictures from no, what was online? Before. Okay. Yeah. And what are your plans for to replace the house if? Uh, is this a total demolition? Yes. And do you have plans to replace the house? Yes, that is the plan. So we can keep the family on the property that they've always known. But yet, yeah, that's the plan: is to is to the demolition and then build something that's, that's bigger, that, that's suitable for the entire family. Okay. Have you seen those plans? So? Not yet. Oh. No. Did you uh, have you come up with any plans that you post put on? Oh, Christian has the plans. Oh, there we go. Give me one moment after. <laughs> Yeah, oh, this is the new house. Yeah. Let's see, you know the house, sir? You know the house? I've seen it up here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does he need a, does he need a clipboard? <laughs> That's the <easel>? prospect. <laughs> yes, yeah, so on to I won't cheat, I promise. <laughs> I guess we don't have one. We did, we did have an easel. Or maybe somebody. Oh, here you go. You want the easel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
<laughs> there used to be. One. There was yeah. an easel right there. Oh, there we go. Not no longer there. <laughs> Thank you. We can do the Vanna White thing and just hold it. Oh, here. Oh. <laughs> That's too hot. So maybe you could just talk a little bit about the plan. Sure. Um, Pretty impressive. We can if you'd like, but. No, I, I got uh, no worries at all. So what was very important is, of course, we're going to have my mother-in-law, her mother, living with us full time, needs her own space. It was her house. We didn't feel right just taking over everything, um, even though the house was handed down to Julie. Um, so that's why it's in her name. So this part of the house is where mom is going to live. <laughs> and mom has her own bathroom and kitchen and a one bedroom. Then you have the two-car garage. Uh, one is for Julie, one is for my mother-in-law. And then our bedroom's on top of the garage. You walk into the, to the house. Uh, this is like the common living area where the TV would be, where the mm -hmm. couch would be, the family gathering area mm -hmm. for all 30 of us when we get together. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, like, all 30 of you are moving in there? I'm like, wow. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> so my mom's one of nine. My dad's one of five. Oh, you they kidding. all have comes at the same time. And the Christmases and Thanksgivings, they're done doing it. So they said, it's up to you now. So that's my side. You Julie already gonna has need a, a big family house. as well. So during the holidays, we're, we were hoping to have a space that could accommodate everyone. So um, you go in the front door, and you'll see that there's um, the, the kitchen to the right. And then on the second floor, we have, or actually on the, behind the kitchen on the first floor, there's a first floor master bedroom, which is for Julie's sister and the newborn baby. Then on the second floor, um, of course, is the master. And then two other bedrooms as well for, again, when the child needs their own room, and then our future children as well. And this is going to go right in the middle of the property due to the setbacks, which is, which is perfect because it gives us a chance to have a driveway for the first time mm -hmm. ever because uh, there isn't a driveway now. Um, and nice size backyard as well. So that's, this is the dream home that can accommodate all of us and our families over the holiday seasons as well. Right. And this elevation, the lower elevation, is facing the road, the street, or is it vice versa? So, there's a, actually a paper road um, that is a dirt road at this time. This is what the, this is facing. Mm -hmm. And then the corner of the house is what's facing the street, but it's set back off the property. Uh, so you probably wouldn't see it because there's hedges and a fence. Um, so, and it's a, a lower elevation from the street. Mm -hmm. So from the street, you're probably looking at the top of the house almost. Okay, and that lower elevation is facing what with the so porch? This oh. is the backyard. Facing uh, okay. the woods. No. There's a okay. cemetery behind us. Mm -hmm. I see where we are now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's the dream. Mm -hmm. It's, it's Big a dream. lovely dream. Yeah. So I'll point out the house compliance with all the setbacks. The town, there's, there's no um, essentially need for a board of appeal. The accessory apartment, which is your mother in law's apartment, is in compliance with um, accessory apartment regulations with 800 square feet. So it's, it's a new construction home, essentially in place of the, the formal home. I make a motion that we accept the, uh, the building uh, explanation of it and uh, let them carry on. Okay, second the motion. Second. Okay. We have two We're seconds. approving the demolition. Mm -hmm. Thank you, so you made a motion to approve the demolition mm -hmm. and it was seconded. All those in favor? Hi. Hi. Any opposed? Is that down off Rockdale? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, that's right. Yes. I had friends who used to live down there. Uh, oh, yeah? yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you guys I for the time. Know. Thank you. Well, Good thank job. You. We'll be right. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. It looks really nice. All right. Next up on the agenda is HDPR 2329-818 Reed Road, built around 1917. Good evening. Mm. My name is Anupam Nagpal. I'm the owner of the property. 
uh, this has been before you the last meeting too when you guys approved it because it's more than a 50 percent reno maybe they're taking it as a full demolition that's why i'm in front of you again to get the same approval if you please so right. nothing has changed nothing not the plan nothing everything remains the same just because it's more than a 50 percent reno they are taking it as a, a demolition full demolition okay mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember. It was just in April that we approved right, right. this previously. So. so they wanted me to pull a demo permit mm -hmm. because it's more than a 50%. Right. So they wanted me to so come in front of you. Everything remains the same. The same. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I make a motion that we, uh, that we allow you to do Thank go you. ahead with this project. Thank you. I second the motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. It's unanimous. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. I right appreciate that. Okay. Thanks a lot. Who's this this is fun. Oh. Can I make it up? Um, no, I think. It's it's two doors. Two doors. Two doors. Can't read that. Okay, HDPR 2331, 8 Macumber Ave, built around 1900, demo existing front porch, install new 5x6 deck. Hi, I'm Hi. Jessie McKenna, the owner. And I'm Leilani Paz, um, daughter of the construction <laughs> supervisor. Yes, Leilani Paz. I've been doing all the permits. <laughs> <laughs> I recognize your name. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I am looking to demo just the front porch of the property. And I know these are pictures that were submitted um, with the application. Plus, I just included what the house will look like because we got a permit to start the siding on the rest of the house mm -hmm. we're just replacing the vinyl siding from tan to blue and then um it is you could see the the uh, porch itself was in bad shape um oh, yeah, but at the vinyl. same time um it wasn't really uh i could we there, there doesn't seem to be any historical features to it um, <laughs> there, was a, there was a deck put on as well which is really yeah. what we use and what i'm keeping up yeah um, what I have to, but that's what I'd like to remove. It's not yeah. for my yeah so the the deck is actually um rotting a little bit on the, if you could you see in the pictures of the on the wood um so it is a little bit dangerous for her kids uh the exi existing deck is 22 feet and 17 and 7 inches long by 6 feet and 10 uh, inches wide and so the new deck is going to be actually five by six so we're actually making it smaller it, yeah we're making it smaller than it than it is right now is the is the new deck going to have a similar balusters Yes, it's, uh, if you take a look, um, she has pictures of the back of her deck. It's going to look similar to something like that. Just uh -huh. much smaller. Just much smaller than that. <laughs> and I don't have to paint it and power wash it. Every yeah, and the setback is 25 feet from the street. And are you going to use the same style of baluster on the... Uh... It's just, it's going to be the... Um, the vinyl, like wood, and then the what, yeah. vinyl, just a, a straight walk up to the front door and the blue siding. And then underneath, we're going to just replace these two windows and stucco um, hmm. underneath and then just, you know, garden in the front, uh, flower garden in the front. Um, so... Uh, you don't want to reuse these uh, balusters? No, I, I'm, I, I would like to take the whole thing down, um, including the roof. Hmm. which is why we need the demo permit, just so I don't have to maintain it. This, because my house faces the uh, Jeep Dodge dealership, so hmm. all day is um, the, busy, the, busy, the, busy. The, the big trucks come through and hmm. drop the cars off, and you know, the, the customers and the salesmen are smoking cigarettes, like, we stay in the backyard, you know, we, we don't wanna, <laughs> so I just don't wanna rebuild something I have to maintain, like, because the back deck is pretty big, and I have to maintain that. And I've only, I've only owned the house since 2020, and I've had to have it painted twice because when I bought the house, it wasn't in great shape. Mm -hmm. So I kind of fixed it and then just really did a better job this summer on the back deck. So anyway, that's why I'd like to just take it off, make the walk up. It's to code and then, um, you know, and then I'll be, it'll be a little more manageable for me too financially than having to rebuild this whole thing. Okay. Next. Did you want to see any more pictures, Sue? No. Mm -hmm. Oh. I make a motion we oh, yeah, accept we their uh, demo request. Second it. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Any Thank opposed? You. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Unanimous. Yeah. Thank you. Cool Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Good night. Oh my gosh. <laughs>
All right, and finally, 6 Prospect Street, 2332, built 1840. Interior renovations, some exterior changes, including windows and doors. So the essence of the renovations is for the older, or actually the newer part of the house with the kitchen, back entry, and office bedroom, and a bathroom. So the idea is to improve the flow through the house. Currently it goes to get into the den, you have to go right by the cooking stove, and then from the den you get into a back hallway to go upstairs or outside, and very narrow doors. So when you entertain, there's always a chance that you're bumping into people working in the kitchen. The idea would be to move the hallway into the back entrance, directly to the back entrance, move the washer dryer up, move the bathroom to the other side with direct access to the den bedroom. So in the later years when I don't want to do stairs, I have a place to sleep. In doing that, I want to move the basement stairs to underneath the set of stairs that are actually in the base, in the kitchen. And that would mean removing one window that's facing the front, but set back 30, 40 feet or so, and moving that window into the den area where there's currently a door. So reusing the window. And the windows will be the same style windows, uh, like for like? Yeah, they're all nine over nine. Nine over nine. Yeah. Yeah, the windows that are being replaced are going to literally, we're going to reuse the same window in one, one location. Yeah. I believe there's one new window, but it's going to be the same, you know, true to historic what's there. Same uh, trim, same. Same everything. We're not going to change the trim. The, the, we're gonna, when we patch the shingles, it's going to be cedar shingles. We're not going to change any of the exterior elements, essentially. Mm -hmm. We're just moving window and closing up a space. That's the only sign you'll have of the work from the exterior. Mm -hmm. Most of the work is all inter internal. All, all the porches, all of that. Porch is another phase, not under this submittal currently. Mm -hmm. the, the phase is, an, is a, it's another phase down the road. Okay. Unless there's a way that you guys are able to approve that phase now, but if there's not, then that's going to be a separate permit submittal and a separate review. Yeah, we have to wait yeah, we until have that. To. Oh, no. I that's just yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Original windows. Any other questions? Comments? Okay. Make a motion that we um, um, approve the uh, the uh, changes as uh, as presented to us. Um, um, so go ahead. I'll second it. All in favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? Okay. All right. Thank Three you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. All right, that's the end of the Thanks. demo application portion. And next on our agenda, unless there are other ones that I came to us, but as far as I know, that was it. Uh, the next thing is the Dartmouth Cultural Center presentation. Hi. Um, so I'm just going to hand this out first. Kathy will go over the, uh, feas it's a feasibility study that we're doing, getting um, approval so that we can uh, get our application for CPA funding. Mm -hmm. um, so we did do a historic paint color uh, analysis. Mm -hmm. The building is Romanesque Revival mm -hmm. with Queen Anne styling. Thank you. And so we... With, during the turn of the century, built in 1890, and the turn of the century, arts and crafts paint colors were becoming um, popular. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, several options for the exterior paint colors uh, that are in that style, which are not selected yet, but we have been um, working on that. And in the back of this is, uh, we have a budget for the CPC request, mm -hmm. and which includes prevailing wages. That might have to happen very soon construction to get the funding and we also had a, a Darm Cultural Center um, they also got a process 
facilitates and so their, their process is a portion here and mm -hmm. also the summary of their costs. Mm -hmm. So j just to back up, we're here um, on behalf, this is Catherine Duff and Sherry McTighe of Studio to Sustain. We're here representing the Dartmouth Cultural Center. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with the building and talking about the town of Dartmouth, and it's a spectacular um, old building, but the Dartmouth Cultural Center would like to make some improvements to the building, and they've been very aggressive about going after some funding and some studies. So they were able to secure a Mass Cultural Facilities Fund grant for $160,000. It is a matching fund, so they have to match that $160,000, and in addition, they were able to secure also from Mass Cultural Facilities Fund a $16,000 study. Um, of which they had to pledge $8,000 of that $16,000. And that was for facilities planning, basically looking at five years out, what's gonna break first, what do you need to be prepared for. Um, then they contacted us because we specialize in historic and adaptive reuse projects. We work on a lot of historic tax credit projects. So um, looking at it in the context of, of meeting the Secretary of Interior Standards for Historic Preservation work, uh, the work on the exterior, because it does need some work done on the exterior. And so we took a look at the study and said, um, you know, you've got to align with the Secretary of Interior Standards and what you do, and you need to make the building handicap accessible. They're bursting at the seams. They're running all these wonderful arts and crafts programs mm -hmm. there, but it's not handicap accessible. So um, we took a look at the broad overall picture and said, took a look at the fund that was done by the Olive Branch that was funded in part by MCC and said um, this is your priority list of what you need to do to the exterior, to some interior improvements, move over to some heat pump technology, there's no AC in the building, um, make some thermal improvements to the building and uh, the cost estimate and working with the town, we've, we've met with the CPC committee twice um, did put in a full application based on those estimates from Olive Branch and also our understanding of historic preservation work um, and the the, his, the um, prevailing wage. Okay. So you're seeking from us is a letter um, supporting your work to go to the CPC? That's correct. Right. Yes. So, okay. And I just want to point out the bulk of the exterior work, we're going to try and, you know, our first our approach to historic preservation is you work with what you have, try and save everything that you have. Um, that sometimes that's not always possible, but uh, for the most part, we do we do work around. That. I will say there's one caveat when it comes to um, to uh, you know wood gutters and things. You can see the gutters have been torn off and replaced with aluminum gutters. So I, I, we would recommend going going to a uh, uh, also accepted by Mass Historic a fiberglass replica gutter that you can have, uh, you know, made in a round uh, profile that would match the building. And That's a wonderful gutter. Yeah, I've I have those that. in my yeah. house, too. Yeah, it's spectacular. Where wonderful they're not gutter. wood. <laughs> we just installed them on the First Baptist Church in New Bedford. Mm -hmm. so oh, nice. They're, it's a great product. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, the windows and whatnot. We, we're going to try and save the windows. So Is the gutter going to be a color? Is it going to be, it's not going to be white, is it going to be a, a color to match the framing of the windows or anything? Yeah, really good question. So this particular company, yes, they take our specification and they actually mold the gutter with that color. It, it's put it right into the gel coat for the, for the fiberglass fabrication. So Dartmouth Cultural Center, the town of Dartmouth, you own the building, they have a lease on it. Uh, you wouldn't have to paint the gutters for Many no, they ma manufacture the color for you in the gutter, and then it would be spectacular then. Yeah, it's spectacular. Um, but we, we do work with a historic consultant as well on the colors as well. We did, a, we did a, a, a preliminary feasibility review of the colors of this period mm -hmm. of building, which we gave you a little snapshot on that. Um, and we always do that because we, we want to look at what's, what are the overall palettes that you're looking at and then work with the client, work with the town. We know that everything that's done to this building has to have town approval of the town owned building. But we're here tonight just to talk about our approach to the historic uh, restoration. We did, the hardest thing about this building is really getting the handicap accessibility. I'm going to be totally honest with you, the building sits high and proud. Um, so you've got you've to elevate it. 
a couple of feet, three and a half feet, and then you, you come down to the lower level, and then how do you connect those two levels? Hmm. So um, that's a little bit of a challenge, and uh, you know, we, we're, we did a little study. We are assured we can, in fact, get a, hand, a ramp on the side of the building where it would not impact the two primary elevations of the historic elevations mm -hmm. of the building. And we can come in um, underneath one of the historic windows and modify that opening to get the handicap accessibility. So mm -hmm. we feel that's a, a good, solid application for mass historic and working around your existing curb cut so you don't have to do any more trauma to your site. Um, and then make handicap accessibility the toilet facility on the inside, which it currently is not handicap accessible. Um, and that would be a huge improvement for the Darwin Cultural Center so they could continue uh, offering it to people who are, you know, challenged, ambulatory challenge. Are you replacing the windows, did you say, or, or you know, are you able I to save them? To um, but if they're rotted through, we'll take a look at that sash. We know we have rot in the sills. We, it's documented. We've hmm. got some um, some pretty serious rot right at the base of those windows. Is that up and down sash? All, yes. All, yeah. hmm. Correct. I know at the very least we're going to tear off these terrible little tri uh, triple tracks. And we'll take a look at trying to save. I'll, I'll bet you the windows sash if... Um, you know, if the age serves the building well, probably in pretty good shape. And it might mean just replacing the rot, and then we'll put a very, uh, you know, low profile, historically correct storm mm -hmm. panel system. Maybe on the inside, so you keep the historic profile on the outside, but sometimes we have to add it on the outside, but it would be very low profile. Uh, and would improve the energy efficiency of the building. Do you work with people who do historic preservation in windows? Or is that part of your... your uh, we do, good. yeah. Yeah, saving windows is a is a is a great idea if you can do that. And the a, um, the old growth wood that those were built with is exactly. much better than the. It's like concrete. Yeah. I mean, it, it will hold up. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, it might be that this piece of trim was replaced at some time, and it might be pine and it's just rotting out. Mm -hmm. So it might just when we do replace it, we replace it with the wood. I mean, nowadays we actually use a what's it called a treated wood product. Um, it is FSC certified. It is wood. It is pre-treated with um, with a non-VOC chemical. It's really most like vinegar, basically, mm. and then primed. And it comes with a 50-year warranty. So it sort of behaves like a um, like a, a PVC type product, but it's wood mm -hmm. and is approved for mass historic uh, restoration work. There's a company that makes uh, interior uh, storm windows that are you, correct. But, uh, you're probably well aware yeah. of that. Uh, Allied, it's a, like there are two of them actually. Yeah. They're good products if you look into that. If you need to look into that. We're installing them on the. We're installing the Allied interior storm panel system on the First Baptist Church windows in New Bedford right now as we speak. And those are huge windows. Well, the um, one on William Street. On what's that? On William Street? Yes, yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. About the size of these windows. Yeah. And that panel system's going on the inside for for all the reasons that because those windows are you know, Yeah, it's a handsome windows. building. Yeah. Yeah, are extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. So it is um, yeah, it's amazing. You know, it's three quarters of an inch wide, that storm panel system on the inside. Yeah. You can't yeah. see it when you yeah. look at the window. So we, it, it, we might be able to do something like this. We're gonna take a look at that. That would be the first option. Mm -hmm. Clean up the rock, clearly. Clean up the windows. Get them operable. Um, repoint the building needs a needs some repointing. I mean, you've got some you have some um, lentils that have very little mortar left in them, mm -hmm. and that's just you know, years and years and years of water dripping down the, that facade. Looks so, like it's good in, in good hands. And then your gutters and your trim. You know, I, I really do want to <laughs> yeah. get this guy on there because I can't stand seeing, you know, it's, just a, it's just a place for rot. It's just going to continue to rot. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, obviously the handicap accessibility. Any other questions? Have you um, looked at what the, um, the layers, the paint layers, to see how far back you can... Um, 
remove to see the original color of the of the woodwork of the the, the pieces that are wood. We haven't done that yet. No. Not on that project. Not on this. We've done it on other projects, sure, but not sure. on this one. Do you plan on doing it for this project? If we can summon the funds uh, to do the study, sure, we would do it. We we've used. Um, in New York City does phenomenal uh, ar archaeological paint studies on, on projects. But first off, we're going to just take care of the rot, and in peeling that back, we may in fact discover mm -hmm. what that original color was. And you have Philip Marshall up the street. And we have Philip Marshall yes, up the street. Yes, you do. And he's phenomenal at doing that work as well, if he's available. Oh, the, and uh, the woman who we hire as our historic consult was uh, one of his students. Yeah, Philip's very proud of the work that Rachel's doing, you know, nationally. Um, but you're right, Phil would be a great resource. Maybe he would donate his time to come to <laughs> that study. <laughs> but I, um, it, at the very least, we've done the historic palette study, so we know what would have been around um, during that time. But uh, yeah, sure, I'd be open to getting Phil involved in between this many travels. That <laughs> Right. All these different countries. Thanks. All right. So, can I ask a question? Yeah. Yes. My name is Philip. Um, are they um, looking at the roof? Was there something about the roof, the slate, or were you going to replace that? Was that included? Yeah, it's actually asphalt, and it is included. It needs to be a roof. Yeah. We're not putting slate back up there, but we'll put a. Um, you know, good asphalt, 50-year shingle. Does that come within your parameters of yes. the budget that you're planning to? It does. It does. And all the flashing that needs to be redone. Good. Thanks. Okay, any other questions? Comments? Can the, now there is slate up there now, cur currently, correct? There is, this roof is asphalt shingle, yes. and this roof is asphalt shingle, yeah. It's all asphalt. Yeah. So there's no slate left on that roof. I didn't take the slate off, but I someone, someone, someone did at some point. Took the slates right. off. In the last 10 years, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The reason why I brought that up is, are you going to try to make the building original again once it's started to make it into the way it looked back in the day, or? Uh, we're going to maintain all of the historic features of the building, but there's not a plan to restore the slates. But what there is, what we do do when we do asphalt shingles, we put them on like it's a slate roof. So we do an exposed valley of flashing, typically copper, or a zinc coated copper, and then we put the shingles, we pull them back away from that so it looks like a slate roof um, from a distance. And you can get a pretty heavy, uh, fiberglass asphalt base shingle that is looks pretty convincing. Thank you. But it's okay. costly to do slate, uh, mm -hmm. and it's it's. But I bet it lasts f longer than fifty years. I know. If it's intact. Yeah. Right. So they're asking for a letter from us. <laughs> to go to the CPC okay. if anybody wants to be saying anything about that. I move that we write a letter of recommendation <laughs> to uh, to uh, support their the renovation that uh, the funding for the renovation. I second the motion. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? None. I'm very professional. We will get that letter over there as soon as possible. Thank you very much. You that needed it all in the past already, didn't you? Did you? You went to the last meeting and needed the letter, yes, but then. But we submitted it pending a review of the Dartmouth Historical Museum. Okay. So you probably are you going back in front of them tomorrow? No, or, no you don't waiting need to. for the letter. Okay. To be submitted. Okay. Great. Um, I'll take care of that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's an honor to work on a building like this. Who knows who's sitting there? Philip. Oh, 
I'm sorry, I'm That's all right. <laughs> I want to go. That's too personal. I want to go. Okay, we still have a couple of other items on the agenda. Don't run away, Bob. Bob, we're still in session. Bob, we're not done yet. Bob. Bob, back. come back. We're still in meeting. Yes. <laughs> Come back. Oh, yeah. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> All right, next item on the agenda was uh, going to be Jamie talking about Form B and uh, Form Bs and trying to get a future budget for DHC to fund those annually. Uh, he did some work on analysis of town meeting voting for other op, um, uh, things where they needed financial support. And it was his point of view that um, the town had been willing to support some things so they would might be likely to support our budget. He is not here to explain his analysis, but we can still discuss the uh, concept of a budget and whether we should continue to move forward with that. Um, just from the email that I received from Jamie in regard to the, the analysis of the town meeting, he makes mention of the revolving fund and there was another, and I'm sorry I didn't have a chance to review it before coming tonight. There was another um, request for funding, but in both those cases there are revenue sides to that, which we don't have. So I don't know how we can ask for a budget and, and, find, and, and say that it's similar to revolving fund or, oh, I'm sorry that I can't recall but we don't have any form of revenue. So it, it's not, that's like apples and oranges in my estimation. So unless he can come up with another rationale as to why he thinks that, you know, going to before town meeting for a budget when we can get the funds from the administrative funds from CPC, it makes no sense to me. Mm -hmm. Yes? Do we vote on? Well, I, let's see if there's any further discussion. I think the idea going back was that we didn't have, that we had had a budget, then it was taken away and we got enough for stamps and photocopying, and that we were going to the CPC for funding. That worked fine until we asked for a second thing, and then we had to take a year off where we didn't know foreign bees. Is that correct? Mm hmm I, okay. Yes. Have you guys have anybody gone to the grant network of granting, uh, applying for a grant for your budget? Uh, no, no, we haven't because we do have a source of funding with the CPC that we've used in the past. The idea was we found out this year that we could only use that. Um, could only apply for one thing this year, and we used it for the archaeological reconnaissance survey update, and therefore we couldn't do foreign bees this year. So next year we won't have the archaeological survey, so we can go back to doing foreign bees, asking for that money from the CPC. Um, I guess the idea was that it would be nice to be able to do both and to always have the money without going in front of the CPC. And I understand that at one point there was a budget and then it was taken away, but so was it taken away from a lot of other committees. And the town is always faced with, you know, it, 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 it can be sometimes be a roller coaster, but we're always faced with some kind of financial crisis. And to, you know, come forward and ask the town for money when we clearly have another avenue that's, that, are, that 
there, those funds are available for us to use for that purpose, I, it doesn't make any sense to me that, unless, you, unless everybody thinks they want to risk it, because if we go forward and we are denied, then we're going to be waiting another year. And the other fund that, besides revolving, was enterprise. Revolving funds and enterprise both have revenue sides. The other line item that he said was easily passed had to do with the autom automatic door opening for the town hall because at one time we had a custodian that had to be at town hall to open the door for, night, for the evening meetings. Now it's all computerized and the, the doors are locked and then it's in the computer that they open at such a time, so it doesn't require um, any personnel to do that. And that needed to be replaced, as I understand it. So. Okay, well, I, I guess we could just, uh, we could bring it back up next time, but I think the idea might be to move forward with another round of um, form Bs with the CPC while we continue to discuss the future of having a budget, at least we can be moving forward with form Bs now that we've already done the archaeological reconnaissance survey for this year. Nothing's going to be competing for the form, form Bs, so hmm. might as well just move forward with that. Makes sense, yeah. And not stall on trying to get a budget, because then we're going to be st still here for another year. Correct. So I guess I think. I don't know if anybody wants to make a motion to the effect, but maybe we could see about moving forward with Form Bs right away and getting an application to... i make a motion on to James' um, Form B referendum he's pushing through to um, leave it open till August meeting and bring it up again. We can do that. It doesn't necessarily preclude us from going ahead and also applying to the CPC for funding for foreign bees right away. Correct? Yes. Okay. Would somebody I keep it moving. Right? <laughs> right. So I guess we need a motion. Yes. Relative to bring it up again next meeting because James wasn't here today to discuss it. At the same time that we move forward with. CPC. Right, writing an application for CPC for the next round of funding. Mm -hmm. Yes. Does that work? Yes. Would somebody like to put that into a concise motion? Come on. Well, okay. Could somebody second it? Do I? I can't second it. No. Second, I'll second it. it. You, you can't. You just made it. the motion. Second. second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Who seconded? I don't know. Oh. It was, uh, Bob, Bob Harding. Bob Harding. So we're going to bring this back to the agenda for next time to continue discussing getting a budget <laughs> at the James same time be, uh, as we move ahead with actually doing the application for the CPC. James will be right here. away. Okay. All right. Moving on then. Goals and preservation priorities. A couple of months ago, at this point. I sent, Jamie and I met and hammered out another draft of the preservation um, goals and priorities, and I sent that around. Just a hunch that maybe not everybody reread it in time for this meeting? No. May I Your hunch is right. to go to the men's? You may. Now I feel like I'm a teacher again. Uh, well, again, Jamie and I worked on that. It, it seems like given uh, where we are with things tonight, maybe we should also kick that one down the road. But it ties into the next thing with number four there. So I guess we can just move it along to next time, unless anybody wants to discuss it now. 
Hearing nobody wanting to discuss it, we'll move on to number four and put three back on the agenda with strict instructions that everybody's going to get sent it again and needs to read it so that they can intelligently discuss it at the next meeting. So next one is... Is that DH coming from the town clerk or...? No, I, I sent that out and I'll send it out again. Okay. Um, DHC members, expectations, responsibilities, and roles. No. What? Oh, sorry. <laughs> A lot of chatter over there. Um, it seems like we come to these meetings and some people have prepared more than others. And it's really hard to discuss some topics when not everybody has done the homework. And again, that's a high school teacher. I can't help myself here, but you know, you can't, I think we all need to be serious about our roles and responsibilities if we're gonna discuss these things that are really important to people in town, we need to come, come here prepared. And so, um, you know, Michelle was making copies for a while before that, there was people actually had to drag themselves into the office and look at printed materials, which I thought was, you know, that was kind of onerous. It is easier now, in my opinion, but I'm comfortable with tech. So I don't know what the solution is, but I'm just wondering, are people willing to, to do what's necessary to come ready to roll? And then is that an expectation that we can put forward to people who might then become DHC members? Somehow for months now, I have not been getting the agendas and the minutes of the meetings. And I've been calling Judy Lunn up to the time she was running the meetings mm -hmm. To, to, to get a copy of the of the uh, uh, of the agenda mm -hmm. in a minute. So, and I tried chasing that down. I'm not good at this. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the going down that rabbit hole of the town hall is is just destroys your day, <laughs> destroys my day. And I don't know where the paperwork is coming from. I, I'd like to have. I'd like to know where what is coming from, what I should expect from the town, mm -hmm. and what I should expect from, you know, from the chairperson or whoever's mm -hmm. running the meetings. Well, have, if, have you attended any of the instructional groups? Uh, no, I have not. Groups? No. I mean, that was very helpful. That tells you, that gives you all the information, it gives you the website, it gives you the password, you know, you can look at all the applications, so you just have to go into the portal and and look at it. It requires, you know, a little bit of homework before the meeting. And I think that, you know, tonight was light by comparison. Sometimes we have twice as many demo applications and to make, you know, a whole audience of people wait because we haven't reviewed all the information and looked at all the photographs and done our, you know, the background work. That's, that, I feel like it's, it's a little ir irresponsible. If I send, I, depending on what happens with number five, if the meeting minutes and agenda get to you promptly the way they should, mm -hmm. um, if I send out the instructions for getting on the portal, and then I, one more time, we can either meet at the town hall. I mean, every time Michelle says, I will meet, with people individually and retrain. Chad has offered to do that. If we do that again, would that be enough for you to say, okay, I'll come to the meeting? And that, not just you, but will that be enough for people to come to the meeting prepared so that we can streamline this process and make it more? Um, that would be helpful. Yeah. Because I can, I can, I'll redo, I'll, I'll start but whenever, again. Whenever those meeting meetings were happening, I, I don't remember the exact circumstance, but I, I don't believe I was here. Yeah. I was in town. Well, you live two minutes away from me, so I'll call you. Mm. Come on by. I'll show you what to do. Mm. And we'll be good to go before the next meeting. And he's got a computer. I'd be happy Well, can to. Michelle do that? Yeah. 
Yep, but you'd have to come here. Hmm. I was well, just saying that because I know you live nearby. Oh, okay. <laughs> when, oh. When, when is this refreshing course going to start? Well, I was just, I don't know if anybody needs it, but Michelle has offered to do it anytime. You just got to reach out to her and she'll do it again. But I just want to make sure you have the material, so I'll send it out again, the instructions with the password. And okay, we can go that'd from be great. There. Thank you. And, um, <laughs> the other, you know, I just, we, we def desperately need more members. And I just want us to be being as professional as, as we can. Linda? Um, I think there's a need to review uh, email addresses with everybody because some people have multiple ones and some people have new ones. So if you have uh, an email that you don't think you're getting emails onto it, give her, give Chris what the email address is that she should use. Because yep. I think Judy had taken a couple of updates and you may have gotten them, but you may not have gotten them. Um, I think Bob, you have a couple. Philip got a new one. I got Phil's last yep. time. You were getting everything now, right? I'm getting everything. Okay. Uh, I think there have been a couple um, All right. that talked about. So. Yeah, I, I have not been on the agenda list for... So why don't you just thing. jot down your email, make sure I get it before we leave today so that I'm sure to be sending the right mm -hmm. thing to the right person. Yeah, because I bought a smartphone for my 80th birthday in August. It's right here, folks. <clears throat> All right. All right. That seems to take care of number four. It was weighing on my mind. Number five. Uh, well, so I've been co-chair slash acting chair. I'm not even sure what I was today. But we're at a point where we need to decide who's going to be the chairperson and elect that person. Um, and we also need somebody to take on the role of secretary. And somebody needs to either be assigned or volunteer to be the representative to the CPC because I'm finding that the chair position so far has been uh, a lot of work. <laughs> you, and I don't mind, but. Are you, do you want to be the chairperson? Or are you hedging for? An I'm willing to be. B, if I can get the rights, if I can get some real support from the rest of the, the crew. crew. But that means, you know, everybody's got to step up and do what they've got to do. And also, to, if I, if we need help for something, everybody can't just scatter. You know, if somebody needs to take the secretary secretary's position, you know, it can't be Sue every time, necessarily. Maybe we have it rotate, but... Maybe. There can't be the same people doing the, all the work all the time. Yes. There's a tape recorder in the back, in the in the drawer. Mm -hmm. We have a tape recorder. Mm -hmm. We should maybe reinstate the reinstate our tape recorder. It's recorded, Phil. Yeah, we've got we have we've got a video TV. recorder. But I mean, have a secondary recorder where no. No. No, we don't need that. We've got we've got everything we need. We could either have somebody taking the minutes from the recording, or I think I would prefer having somebody taking them at the time of the meeting and then double checking with the recording to make sure for accuracy. But um, if I'm to be the chairperson, then I would not be the secretary. So, so do we put a recruiting could. poster downstairs, recruiting people for the historical commission? We sure could. Um, so I'm not really sure how to proceed with this particular item. I kind of feel like I'm a... Well, I mean, I'm, if you're I'm, ready for I'm a motion, I'll make a motion. I'll make a... I'll second the motion. Well, she has to make I one to first. to make one first. You can't just... <laughs> I've already... It's in the into internet. Sue's uh, first. I'll make a motion to elect Chris as the um, chairperson for the Dartmouth Historical... I'll second it. I third it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I will abstain. I'd like to make a little, little confession. Uh -oh. I'm very limited with my hearing, and I would do a little more than I do if I could hear, but I can't. I couldn't even take minutes because I, 
I, I miss 60% of what everybody says. Even, and I have very expensive hearing aids. But in a room like this, yeah. and with soft voices, and a lot, it's just, it's hopeless. It's and uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm also limited with my amb ambulation, so I don't get around much. So I'm not much help. You bring so much else to the table that I think you can be well, forgiven I for try, not hearing I anything. I try my best, but <laughs> I, I know how limited I am, and I'm pretty much realistic about that. That's all right. I think I, I think we can deal with the secretary part, but anyway, we've got a motion on the table, and there was a vote, and yeah. is it done? Yeah, it's yeah. unanimous. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, before we... We're still on this, though. Is yep. there anybody who would like to be secretary or the representative to the CPC? Or who, even if they would like to be, would they be willing to do it anyway? Can we get someone outside of our commission to be? No. 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 Well, I'll make a motion to assign James O'Day to the Community Preservation Committee. I uh, second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We go. And is there, a, if there's a secretary position, we could? I'll do secretary for now until we come up with a way of alternating somehow. Or getting more people on. Or the, getting someone else. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what we really need to do. Okay, well, thank you. Okay, that gets us to old business. Update on archaeological survey work. Uh, we heard from Holly two weeks ago. She's gathered a lot of information. She's been going over the LIDAR and the sensitivity maps and making changes. And she was hoping to get back out in the field this week. But we didn't hear from her. And she's invited us to come with her if she goes out to, you know, check out foundations. So I'm hoping that we hear from her next week and get an opportunity to go out and do a little field work. Um, but it seems like it's uh, progressing nicely, and that's all I have to say in this. Got something to add? No? All right. DHAS. Oh. On... Uh, uh, our book launch, which is coming up on the 22nd, is under good control, and uh, looks like we'll have a little under 75 guests, and we have some pretty outstanding speakers, including the uh, Quaker Scholar will be the main speaker, and uh, we're going to have a couple of surprise announcements that I won't give away yet, but there'll be very, very positive announcements that'll be coming out at the 22nd. Uh, also uh, of note that is kind of historic, the uh, class of 1953 of Dartmouth High School is having its, its uh, 70th reunion on the 24th and 25th at the uh, Reservation Golf Club Party, party room, and we got people coming in from California, Montana, Texas, Vermont, Pennsylvania, and Dartmouth. And the class was only 67 to start with, and 33 of them are dead already. So we're doing pretty well in getting the rest of them here. And we're gonna have a, a clam boil with a lobster and a uh, couple of nice outings. And a speaker is going to talk about the Goat Lady of Dartmouth, and show, and we're going to give away a book to every class member who shows up. So I'm very proud of that. Uh, we're, I'm going to be participating um, in a French-Canadian family get-together in Westport, and so is uh, Diane. And it should be pretty interesting. Uh, it's going to be over at the Handy House. And um, it's a joint effort between 
Dartmouth Historical and Westport Historical. And we, we seem to be doing a little more together than we used to be. And I think that's a positive thing. For some reason, historical com committees, uh, historical whatever we are, societies, <laughs> don't always work together. They sort of like silos all around. Mm -hmm. And I think they've, there's so few of us who are interested in history, it'd be good if we work together more than, more than we do. I know Susan's been working for years to try to help us do that. And um, it's, a, it's a good goal. I would like to see a lot more of it. Um, that, that's uh, about all for now. That's, uh, that's good. Thank you. Is there any other business? No? Um, just an update on the, the uh, Brussels Mills house that we talked about at the last meeting. Oh, yeah. uh, that house has been sold, um, and it looks like the people who are, uh, have bought it uh, have been cleaning up the property, and uh, uh, it looks like they're going to restore it, and uh, it's not going to be torn down at any rate. So, so your not, reference, this is the trainer house? Right? That's a trainer house, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Make a motion that we adjourn. <laughs> Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.